I'm just worried about fraud. Fraud. Um, the misuse of AI can be um, intimidating in terms of fraud. You can fake voice clips. You can fake statements mm -hmm. in social mm -hmm. media through uh, actual influencers, political figures. Um, those social media statements that can be AI generated, that could be misuse of AI fraud, um, which is really, um, it, it's scary to think about the fraud. Um, as AI advances, maybe regulation will advance with it. Maybe the um, consequences of misuse and fraud will advance with it as well. Hello. My name is Junius Williams, your host on Everything's Political. And we asked this season, if everything's political, what do young people mm -hmm. think? So we've got some young people here. They definitely are young. <laughs> and they're going to introduce themselves. I understand they are from Technology High School in Newark, New Jersey, one of the nationally ranked high schools. I'm going to emphasize that nationally ranked high schools in the United States by whoever does those kinds of things. So uh, let's go to my extreme right and tell me who you are. My name is Alex Chen. I'm a senior at Technology High School, and I'm interested in computer science, uh, specifically in security and privacy. My name is Anjane Malabanan. I'm a senior in Technology High School, and I'm interested in civil engineering and business. Very good. Very good. Uh, and I understand you went to the governor's state of the state address, Alex? Uh, yeah, I was invited as a guest for uh, on the topic of AI. Oh. Oh. On the topic of AI. Very good. So that's what we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence. And he already used a set of initials that I have to get used to. AI, you know, that that could mean anything back in my day. But AI, artificial intelligence, and that's what these young people are going to be talking about today. I mean, we can have war, we can have fights, we can have all kinds of stuff. But the constant thing that keeps coming up in one way or another is artificial intelligence. So tell me, how does uh, artificial intelligence fit into your daily life at this point? In our daily lives? Uh, well, it's it's being used experimentally all around us. You can see in advertisements in how they try to uh, appeal to your per, uh, preferences. So they take data that you give to them through your uh, usage based on your phone, your watch history, your search history, all that, and then they spit out advertisement based on the data they collected. So that's one way AI has been. Uh, collecting and learning from different users. As you said, um, AI is like generally impacting my life. I don't use AI as a tool personally, but um, generally speaking, AI is an adva advancement that's um, being progressed on um, in a daily manner. So generally I'm being affected personally. I'm not really using AI as a tool. How's it being used? Um, a in the education academics, I've seen AI being used to um, usually kind of generate prompts, as in liter literacy, like prompts for essays. People use these um, chat GPTs uh, to create essays for their own. So in a personal use, students use those um, websites such as chat GPT to formulate those um, essays for their education, which is, um, that kind of leads to a, a bigger um, bigger area of AI and how it's being, um, what's that term for it? Um, plagiarizing. Yes, plagiarizing um, in terms of AI, but what's that? Unregulation and... Um, Over-reliancy. Yeah, over They're relying reliance. on AI, like in terms of education. They don't, um, they don't use their own knowledge in these um, subjects like literature, and they're relying on these websites that are AI-based. It reminds me, um, when I have these conversations now, 
back when spell check first started popping up of, well, now folks are not, never going to know how to spell. And it's going to destroy uh, the English language or all language globally because people don't know how to spell and then they're not going to know how to write. Um, how do you feel about AI being relied on? So it sounds like over-reliance is potentially an issue, but what about some form of reliance and where should we be relying on AI? I think AI uh, will be effective in making some tasks more efficient. Like we talked about earlier, over-reliance. Uh, is spell check, does it count as uh, using it is over relying on spell check really that bad? It would it would it reduce stu- uh, hu- uh, people's mental capacities? Will over relying on AI uh, make people over reliant on using it as a tool rather than learning and being able to formulate their own uh, projects? Yeah. I, I- I've been reading about that. Uh, I have one article here which says that uh, the the experts look at what AI has done, uh, helpful, yeah, helpful tool or wrench in the business model. This is a New York Times article. Uh, it says Chat GPT can be an aid for creative tasks but it can also lead to some mistakes. And then they go on to talk about uh, well, on, on, on a task that required reasoning based on evidence. Chat GPT was not helpful at all. And this group, volunteers were asked to advise a corporation. This was a theoretical corporation. And uh, it uh, didn't do as well Unaided humans had the correct answer 85% of the time. Uh, people who use chat GPT without training score just over 70%. Uh, so does that kind of destroy the myth that the AI is going to be the catch-all and the end-all to learning? I think AI is a technological tool. And just like every other technological tool, it's used um, to support you finish a task with um finish a task uh which it which would be less time consuming and it would lead to more efficiency um but just like every other tool it could be used incorrectly that's where i go back to over um reliancy um chat gpt is a very broad um tool it gives you the answer that you need but when you rely on it too much. Um, If this tool is used incorrectly, then that knowledge that you get from ChatGPT, it's not yours. And sooner or later, you're gonna depend on this website to answer all the questions for you and you're not gonna be able to think for yourself. That's when you need to learn how to use AI properly. It's a tool that you need to learn how to use properly. Like, you, you can't rely on AI too much. You're going to lose knowledge at some point. But it's out there. And, and isn't the human, uh, the, the human condition such that people are going to definitely over-rely? Uh, here's another little report here, a little another, another little snippet from this article. In the near future, language bots like OpenAI's ChatGPT and, and Meta's Llama and Google's Gemini are expected to take on many white-collar tasks like copywriting, preparing legal briefs, and drafting letters of recommendation. The study is one of the first to show how the technology might affect real office work and office workers. Uh, Isn't that going to happen? And isn't that probably happening now? On the subject of job displacement, I think AI for some tasks, for simpler tasks, it will start replacing human workers. But at the same time, it can also open up job opportunities for other jobs that help build AI or require more human interaction than per se simple tasks that could be automated with AI. Does that worry you? Do you 
Are you excited about what that looks like for the job market? You're in high school, clearly not quite stepped into the full career path yet. Does that excite you? Does it worry you about what jobs are going to be out there for not just you, but also your family and your friends? I'm not really excited nor um, kind of intimidated by this AI thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people kind of fear change, more importantly, technological advances, only because it's um, this sort of intellectual competition. We as humans are naturally, um, we naturally are intimidated by anything that is intellectually um, competitive. Mm -hmm. That's why people are kind of scared of AI. And I don't. I be, I personally believe that AI is not something that's going to be taking over and killing off all the jobs. Um, as I've heard uh, our governor Phil Murphy mention um, in yesterday's state to state meeting, uh, state of the st- uh, state address. Yes, uh, he addressed AI and how people fear that AI might take over and kill off the jobs, but AI will provide discovery which will benefit medical fields and will benefit educational sh- educational fields. So work f- workforces such as that will get benefited and it won't kill off jobs, but it will benefit jobs. We shouldn't be worried so much about killing the jobs, but uh, shouldn't we be concerned about cheating? Here's, a, here's a, the rapid growth of artificial intelligence is testing the boundaries of copyright law. Now, if you assume that people have a right to their intellectual information, then should somebody else be able to come in and just use it and not compensate? Here's a, here's a, a lawsuit. This came out, I don't have an exact date for this article, but uh, the uh, other part of this little duo that I have here for you is uh, New York Times is suing OpenAI and Microsoft because the newspaper uses its articles to train chatbots. This was the deep intelligence that you were talking about. Somebody's got to come up with the information. Do the people get compensated for all of the information that artificial intelligence seems to be able to swallow up and disseminate so freely? Well, it's a it's a very controversial topic. I think that there's arguments for both. Is the intellectual property taken from the original source? Uh, who's there's no accountability, uh, concrete co- accountability set in place for AI. Do we blame the AI itself, whoever designed and created it? Do we desi- uh, Do we blame who's the one inputting? the information into the robot uh, into the AI it's for me I think it's more on the person using the AI more so than the companies that design it but I think it's also up for uh, it's up to the company itself to regulate who's using their programs so open sources uh, can't misuse their products and I appreciate your questions, and that's why lawyers will always be in business. <laughs> because you see, each one of those issues, I'm sure, is being raised by the lawyers for both sides in this lawsuit. Maybe they're using artificial intelligence to write their briefs. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> they're, they're using it to write the things that nobody reads. Somebody That's reads them because that somebody that you gave earlier. It's all the documents people have to create, but nobody wants to read. But somebody's going to read these because there's money involved. As you're thinking about um, the data set that's involved, so one of the things that comes to mind for me is the New York Times does in a lot of incredible reporting over the years. They produce a lot of data. Uh, when we think about even the results from ChatGPT or other services that are similar, one of my biggest concerns is the data set that it's relying on um, and whether it is representative of our our culture, of our demographics, of our full history. Do you think that this is something that we need to be concerned about? 
are you not worried about it? Um, it's something I'm I'm older than y'all, clearly a little bit, um, and it's something that I'm worried about. But should I not be? Wait, can you repeat the the question? Real quick? The question is: Should we be worried that the data set that um, our AI services are learning from is not inclusive enough of our entire history or all of our demographics? Um, so, for example. Um, is an answer that I get from ChatGPT going to acknowledge uh, slavery in the United States if it's not in textbooks, as an example? I think depending on where they're pulling their data sets from, uh, that's up to the company designing the AI, uh, if there's any biases or uh, prejudices built into it, that's where the human error aspect can come into AIs. It's taking data from humans and then learning from that. So, and it's been proven. I believe there was a study that showed that uh, an AI did learn prejudice. Like there was prejudice built into their answers. So it is entirely possible that, uh, and concerning that prejudices and biases can come from AI simply because they learned it from uh, people. What about you, AJ? What are your thoughts on this? Um, hearing this topic of conversation right now, like prejudice being involved in AI, that, that is very scary because AI is like, it has it strictly has no human morale, no human ethic. It's just simply computation, simply infographics. And if human bias is playing into these AIs because of the companies they're being built from, that's certainly a concern. Do we need to regulate it? How do we regulate it? Regulations up for debate. How much can the government regulate these companies? I believe because we are in a democracy, uh, our rights are pretty important. Uh, can the government regulate how much the co a company can do with their uh, technology? And since this is about data, how much of our privacy is actually being exposed to these AIs? Uh, how much data can AI gather from uh, the people and who can actually access this data? Because the AIs are being owned by companies. That means these companies also have access to your data. So how much of our privacy is being infringed on? That's, a, that's of a major concern. So regulation is going to be important. How we're going to regulate it is still being discussed to this day, I believe. So would you feel more comfortable with the government regulating than with the company itself who's using the AI? I think you said earlier that the company should regulate it, but maybe there has to be something, since we are in a democracy and the people elect the government, maybe the government <laughs> should regulate the content, the amount, the time, countenance for all the prejudices. Should there be some kind of trade-off in, uh, in our freedoms on that? It's also a matter of trust. Do we have trust in the government regulating? Uh, who's to say that the government can't also misuse AI in their regulations? Same goes for the companies as well. So there isn't much concrete, uh, there isn't an entity for us to trust as of right now. But I do believe that te technology is very helpful for the advancement of our society. Well, see, that's an interesting question. Who do you trust? <laughs> I mean, uh, the, I think the, the computation for the value of, of uh, open AI, which I think is probably Microsoft, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. it's valued at about $80 billion. Now, are you going to trust Microsoft to regulate an $80 billion operation? Or are you going to take a chance on the government regulating? It's a really tough question. I don't think we've seen enough faults or benefit coming from either a government running this AI or the company running this AI. So I think from, I think through this advancement, it's through time that we see who we can trust regulating this kind of advancement. I have um, no opinion on whether or not I would prefer the government to run it or the companies to run it because trust is like a very 
strong thing. So whether or not I would trust this company or this government to run it, I think I need to see more through time. Would you trust a Reddit thread to run it? Oh. Oh God, no. <laughs> God, no. Oh. All right. Well, let's and and ranking, who would you trust more? Government? Uh, maybe a teacher? What? Just any teacher that you happen to have right now? Uh, Reddit? What is Reddit? Reddit is a a social media platform used to share uh media uh, across. There's um they have different subreddits, so different communities. Uh, all uh, um, all accumulate based on their interest. Uh, in terms of asking who would I would trust more, uh, that's that's gonna definitely differ per person. Of course, I'd trust people I know, but in the grand scheme of things, I think I would trust the company more because companies, I think their interest lies more in the technological advances themselves and. Uh, making money as a whole <laughs> but if it, on the other hand the government is if you're gonna have to bring in politics you're gonna have to bring in the international if the u.s gets access to let's say more advanced artificial intelligence technology that's gonna bring about problems in the international community and then well i can't speak more on that that's <laughs> a matter greater than what i can speak of but isn't the government already involved with AI, having governmental policies and practices and maybe even governmental subsidies? Haven't they been involved with the development of AI? And uh, don't you think they got it? <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they've definitely been involved in the development of AI. They're, they're pushing for it. They, they, of course, want the advantages and uh, technology that can u be used to improve uh, our nation. I think I've seen the government support in this um, advancement for AI. Governor Phil Murphy, he's pushing for New Jersey to be the leader of this artificial intelligence advancement, and they're working with Princeton. Um, in my personal opinion, it's okay for a government to support AI, but I don't think AI as a tool should be used under the um, the aspect of politics or government because it's it um, handles political affairs, it handles communities, it handles nations. That's mm -hmm. all um, representing of human morale, human ethic, and artificial intelligence should not be correlated to that in any way mean possible. But isn't it already involved? Uh, this is just an example that I read about. Uh, somebody was able to portray an opponent uh, in a very uncompromising position, and they did that through AI. Oh, using AI image creation. Image creation or image uncreation. Look, making the example that was given here was somebody mm -hmm. made to look as though they had no clothes on. Uh, <laughs> isn't that political? Don't people use that already, those kinds of tactics on different websites, like 4chan? <laughs> uh, yeah, that goes back to the regulation aspects. Uh, AI sh in the wrong hands could be used to harass others. It, generative AI can be used to create voice clips of people saying things they, ha they didn't say or um, creating um, a photorealistic imagery of them that isn't real. So it's as t as AI improves, it's going to be harder to distinguish if it's real or not. But with better regulation, I believe that we could reduce the amount of people being victimized or attacked by um, malicious actors using AI for ter uh, for bad purposes. So we're back to regulation. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Well, it's going to be them. It's it, it's not going to be us, most likely. It's going to be your generation who takes a huge step forward in how we use and regulate and deploy AI. Um, is there anything that you're really worried about? Uh, you mentioned privacy, but 
AJ, anything that you're worried about? I'm just about? worried about fraud. Fraud. Um, the misuse mm. of AI can be um, intimidating in terms of fraud. You can fake voice clips. You can fake statements mm. in social mm. media through uh, actual influencers, political figures. Um, those social media statements that can be AI generated, that could be misuse of AI fraud, um, which is really, um, it, it's scary to think about the fraud. Um, as AI advances, maybe regulation will advance with it. Maybe the um, consequences of misuse and fraud will advance with it as well. Yeah, because here's, here's a, um, another example. Um, articles appearing with fake authors, names and bios, sporting events, schools. Uh, my wife is a teacher and this has to do with, I don't even know if it's AI is considered it, but, but now they can check to see, uh, professors can check to see if, if your thesis was in fact written by somebody else. Uh, that's pretty bad if you can get out and use uh, somebody else's uh, thesis and put it out there as your own. I think that's the kind of thing that you were talking about. Plagiarism fraud is a scary thing, and if you can identify that um, the student's work is AI, right. I think it's on the student if they get caught doing it because in the first place you shouldn't be committing plagiarism with AI. You should be using your own thesis, your own statements, your own writing. Um, it's on you if you get caught and you have to face the consequences because plagiarism is, has been a bad thing even before AI. I got another kind. I want to shift it a little bit uh, from specifically on AI, but it has to do with technology. And I think this is something uh, your teacher, Mr. Ford, and I were talking about a little earlier. Do you think that all this technology is taking away from young people's ability to concentrate on anything other than the most high of technology? Well, I believe, uh, and studies have proven, I believe, uh, that technology has been reducing the attention spans of uh, students and younger people in the generation. Uh, I think specifically like apps like TikTok, Instagram, they've they provide very short uh, clips of content which gives them entertainment and when they try sitting down reading a book or a longer form of media they couldn't sit there and concentrate uh, for long enough periods of time 47 seconds that's what this one group came up with something called middle match I believe it 47 seconds is all you get by some measures you're lucky these days to get 47 seconds a focused attention on a discrete task. How many minutes are we into this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> this is truly exceptional. <laughs> so uh, we certainly didn't have that problem when I was coming <laughs> along. <laughs> but does that bother you? And, and what do you do to stretch your imagination if you're in that particular situation? If you're the teacher, how do you get students to concentrate when they're up against such an, a, a fierce opponent as uh, high-speed, all-encompassing technology like AI? What's Mr. Ford going to do? <laughs> May I make a comment? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you'll be heard or not, but you can make it. <laughs> Go ahead. I could go on for a very long time about this subject. <laughs> It, it troubles me. It is interfering with the classroom to a certain point, uh, but being able to motivate students with interesting tasks and work and challenging them um, to be creative in thought um, helps extend that time period uh, of concentration. Um, I often have to tell my students, it's time to leave, go to the next class, get up, close <laughs> out your work and go. My classroom was a little different from your average classroom though. Okay, Francesca, how are we gonna close this classroom? Oh, how are we gonna close this classroom? Well, I have a question about creativity. And I think AJ, you mentioned that you wanted to be a civil engineer. 
and having I, my experience with civil engineers is one, my god sister is a civil engineer, but also I built a house. And we were in Jersey City in a floodplain and we had to bring in a civil engineer. And the thing that I noticed with that civil engineer is that there was a set script that they were able to follow, but then there was another mountain of creativity that they had to climb. So how do you find creative spaces? How are you both finding a space outside of AI to um, imagine the way that Mr. Williams was talking about, uh, explore other aspects of your mind? Are you reading? Is there music involved? What else complements your experience with technology? My experience with technology, I again, I don't use AI as a tool personally. I just listen to music. I hyper fixate on these projects. Uh, Mr. Ford teaches uh, project-based learning. So we often work on a lot of um, hands-on projects or just projects that would last for weeks. And I hyper fixate on, um, on them. I have a kind of a weak attention span. But when I hyper fixate on these projects, I just put music on. I um, brainstorm ideas. I create design plans. I have strategies. And whatever works best, whatever creativity I have, um, I just put it all together and create like this sort of final draft that originates from um, this, oh, what do I call it? Um, it's like multiple drafts of ideas that I work on. And if it fails, it fails. I learn from it. Um, I have no idea if that's answering your question, <laughs> but that's how I... That's how I'm understanding the question you're asking. But well, it was interesting. You you do say that you have a short attention span. Do you think that's because of uh, the technical uh, field that you're in, or just from growing up as a young person? You probably got your earliest phone pretty early, and you went forward from there. Uh, yes, I was spoiled as a child, so I got my phone very early, <laughs> and. <laughs> Um, yes, I fall victim to social media and high speed um, technology. So yes, that hindered my attention span, I can say. But um, I'm working against it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm taking time to, ti uh, I'm taking separate time on hobbies and uh, stuff like that, so. What kind of hobbies? Yeah. Oh, um, play guitar, read, mm -hmm. knit, just average. Um, interest I catch on yeah so you're trying to reclaim your humanity yes okay <laughs> <laughs> um yes basically how about you Mr. Chen are you a victim of short uh, term lately memory, et uh, as of lately yes I think my attention span has decreased over the years uh lately I find I found myself not being productive at home uh, in front of my computer I've taken some time, oh, some more time in the classroom or going to a library or going to mm -hmm. a cafe to finish my work there uh, when I don't need to use like certain technologies or AI when working on a project. Um, so yeah. I have one other question. What percentage of your class assignments do you think ChatGPT could do well enough to get a C? Well enough to get a C? Yeah, not, not not like an A student, but a C. I think as of right now for a high school student, if you were hypothetically to use ChatGPT, I think you'd be able to pass most of your classes. I'd say a good 70%, but in technology high school, we have these career-based curriculums. Um, but the course I'm taking right now is engineering. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can ChatGPT an A into its work you have to learn yourself and if you, even if you cheat through it that's not going to benefit you at all in the long run so luckily <laughs> AI can't replicate uh, real real activities uh, technology has a lot of hands on activities labs so you know AIs can only write up some essay for you but it can't build you this house or do yeah. or do this for you. You have to learn that yourself and do it. Do you think that's coming? 
I'm sure we we're able to get there one day. Not, not anytime soon, though. <laughs> Being able to uh, plan out their own, so let's say architecture, for example. Being able to plan out their own house and then having machines build it themselves. I think that technology is still a long way from now. I think as we're just automating simple tasks and work that people don't want to do. <laughs> Well, I, something that scared me along that line, uh, I think it was in the context of the chat GBT or maybe one of the others, uh, but that the uh, machine was able to go beyond just the facts, the factual learning that it had incorporated, let's say from just gobbling up the New York Times, but it was able to do some reasoning and it was able to project what this person or persons or situation would actually achieve or how it would occur. Doesn't that worry you? That's the kind of thing we used to watch in movies and stuff like that. And, and uh, oh yeah, well you can leave and not worry about that, but uh, now you've got this thing that looks like that maybe that can uh, really replicate and activate a Junius Williams that nobody else knows? Last question to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do think the former sci-fi films depicting, oh, AI is going to take over the world is like a little bit exaggerated. I do think that uh, people, uh, our bright minds and future bright minds would be able to uh, control and regulate what AI will be able to do. Uh, it it shouldn't be able to get to the point where we'd have to think of AI as a true threat to humanity as a whole. Um, I'm circling back to when I mentioned that um, humans are naturally intimidated by um, intellectual competition. Um, the intimidation coming from AI and how quick the generation of intelligence can be and how we're intimidated by it, I think due to that intimidation we underestimate our own intelligence and it'll be a long way from here if even possible that AI would take over. Well I want to close by thanking both of you and just to say that uh, maybe it won't happen while I'm still here because <laughs> I'm in the fourth quarter but uh, it would be a shame if we have to use our intelligence to fight the machine that our intelligence created. Thank you. Thank you. And I really enjoyed your conversation with us. You guys are on the money. Thank you. Everything's Political Podcast is sponsored by the Center for Education and Juvenile Justice and supported by the Terrell Foundation and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and listeners like you. It is produced by Mosaic Strategies and Dreamplay Media with theme music by Anthony Ant Jackson. If you like this episode, please subscribe to the Everything's Political Podcast on YouTube, press the red button, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you can connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, do so. See you next time. And remember, stay political.